Hey, a great song from my high school days. Romeo and Juliet. Hmm? Da, 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 da. Samson and Delilah. Okay. So I, that's what we're talking about today. From your high school days. And by the way, I knew that song well before I knew this story that we're going to talk about today. Samson and Delilah. That's right. There you go. Well, that's what we're talking about today on HC Daily. You're listening to another episode of HC Daily, a daily devotional podcast that you can listen to at home or on the go. We believe that you can grow as much as you want to grow spiritually, and this podcast can be a part of your daily growth plan. So, whether you're watching on YouTube, listening on Spotify, or your favorite podcast app, we're glad you're here. Now, let's join our hosts, Jeff Forrester and Chris Zarbaugh in the studio. Okay, Chris, <laughs> you're already laughing. It makes me nervous. No, <laughs> he's sitting I'm there good. with a big smile already. Uh, so, uh, man, I've asked you all kinds of questions over the last several weeks. So we're getting to know you and, and the mystery that is Chris Sarba. <laughs> and and uh, I thought today what we would dig <laughs> into such is a jerk. You, you've told <laughs> you've told us things that you love. You yeah. mentioned how much you love, you know, um, sushi things like that. Yeah. I'm just wondering, uh, could you tell us what is your Pet peeve, your biggest pet peeve. Oh, yeah, I, I have a quick answer. Yeah, yeah. Untrimmed eyebrows and nose hairs. <laughs> okay. Dude, really? look, at, really? look at a mirror, yeah. guys. <laughs> Come on. Okay. How could okay. you possibly well, go like, out in I public gotta fix like that? my eyebrows. I'm sorry, man. Yeah, so, so anybody <laughs> who is able to look in a mirror and look at themselves and go, yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's good. And then walk out with hairs hanging out of your nose, bro. You're assuming most people do that. No, I, what I'm are saying you projecting? is, are you projecting on us, Chris? No, no, is that what you do? No, here's here's what I'm saying. Looking Anytime good. you see a person that is like that, who uh-huh. has like hair sticking out of their nose, uh-huh. uh, they did look in the mirror that morning. But they may not have, you know, snapped their fingers and felt like they were ready to go. Well, not yeah. everybody's the fawns. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but this is my pet peeve. <laughs> okay. Okay, well, that's so that's really helpful because uh, if you want to be Chris's friend, uh, make sure you trim your eyebrows, and <laughs> pluck your nose hairs. I've actually told people yeah. that <laughs> people that I love. I'm like, bro, we're gonna have a conversation. <laughs> that's amazing. That was not what I was expecting. So, yeah. see how enlightening these questions are. Yes, that's what I'm saying. Th- th- this is this is what it means to ask penetrating questions in an interview. Right there. So significant. Right, it's very, very significant. Okay, mm. so we are reading today uh, one of the more famous stories of Samson, uh, and it's his entanglement with Delilah, and there have been all kinds of operas and movies made about this story specifically. And songs. And songs, apparently, yes. And uh, so this is found in Judges chapter 16. So we're going to read Judges 16, 1 through 22. And it says, one day, Samson went to the Philistine town of Gaza and spent the night with a prostitute. Word soon spread that Samson was there, so the men of Gaza gathered together and waited all night at the town gates. They kept quiet during the night, saying to themselves, when the light of morning comes, we'll kill him. But Samson stayed in bed until midnight. Then he got up, took hold of the doors of the town gate, including the two posts, lifted them up, bar and all. He put them on his shoulders and carried them all the way to the top of the hill across from Hebron. Sometime later, Samson fell in love with a woman named Delilah, who lived in the valley of Sorek. The rulers of the Philistines went to her and said, Entice Samson to tell you what makes him so strong, and how he can be overpowered, and tie him up securely. Then each of us will give you 1,100 pieces of silver. So Delilah said to Samson, Please tell me what makes you so strong, and what it would take to tie you up securely. (laughs) Samson replied, If I were tied up with seven new bowstrings that have not yet been dried... I would become as weak as anyone else. So the Philistine rulers brought Delilah seven new bowstrings, and she tied Samson up with them. She had hidden some men in one of the inner rooms of her house, and she cried out, Samson, the Philistines have come, up, come to capture you. But Samson snapped the bowstrings as a piece of string snaps when it's burnt by fire, so the secret of his strength was not discovered. Afterward, Delilah said to him, You've been making fun of me and telling me lies. Now please tell me how you can be tied up securely. And Samson said, If I were tied up with brand new ropes that had never been used, I would become as weak as anyone else. So Delilah took new ropes and tied him up with them. The men were hiding in the inner room as before, and Delilah cried out, Samson, the Philistines have come to capture you. But again, Samson snapped the ropes from his arms as if they were thread. And then Delilah said, you've been making fun of me and telling me lies. Now tell me, how can you be tied up securely? And Samson replied, 
If you were to weave the seven braids of my hair into one fabric on your loom and tighten it with the loom shuttle, I'd become as weak as anyone else. So while she slept, Delilah wove the seven braids of his hair into the fabric, and then she tightened it with the loom shuttle. Again, she cried out, Samson, the Philistines have come to capture you. But Samson woke up, pulled back the loom shuttle, and yanked his hair away from the loom and the fabric. Then Delilah pouted, How can you tell me I love you when you don't share your secrets with me? You've made fun of me three times now, and you still haven't told me what makes you so strong. She tormented him with her nagging day after day until he was sick to death of it. Finally, Samson shared his secret with her. My hair has never been cut, he confessed, for I was dedicated to God as a Nazarite from birth. If my head were shaved, my strength would leave me, and I'd become as weak as anyone else. Delilah realized he had finally told her the truth, so she sent for the Philistine rulers. Come back one more time, she said, for he has finally told me his secret. So the Philistine rulers returned with the money in their hands, and Delilah lulled Samson to sleep with his head in her lap, and then she called in a man to shave off the seven locks of his hair. In this way, she began to bring him down, and his strength left him. Then she cried out, Samson, the Philistines have come to capture you. And when he woke up, he thought, I will do as before and shake myself free. But he didn't realize that the Lord had left him. So the Philistines captured him and gouged out his eyes. They took him to Gaza, where he was bound with bronze chains and forced to grind grain in the prison. But long, er, but before long, his hair began to grow back. Wow. That's where we're stopping, right? That's where we're stopping. We're going to save the final victory for the next That's time. right. So this incredible story starts with Samson escaping town by pulling up the gates. <laughs> yeah. And and bars and all, and the posts that were with him. Mm -hmm. And guess, guess what? He carries it uphill. Yeah, right. So, so he didn't skip leg day either. Right. <laughs> no, he didn't. Yeah. So, He's like the rock at this point, right? Yeah. He does leg day too. Yeah, so it's just uh -huh. amazing. And so, yeah. uh, you know, the Philistines are, and, and let's not even skip over the fact that he slept with a prostitute. Right. Which, which, by the way, is uh, it's not, not acceptable. I mean, God's not endorsing it. No. He's just saying this, this guy's bad behavior is out of control. It's out of control. Not only that. What's he doing wandering around in, in the Philistia anyways? Yeah. Well, he has obviously no fear. It's that whole cockiness yeah. versus confidence thing. Yeah. He thinks he's untouchable, and he thinks that there's nobody that really can do anything much to him, so he's going to do what he wants. Yeah, but he's not spending time with God's people. Right. He's spending time in the world. He's not doing the things of God's people and the things that a judge should be doing. He's abandoning his, abandoning his spiritual leadership and his post. And he's leaving the people, and he's going out and living in the land of pagans and God-haters and behaving like them, acting like them, even sleeping with uh, prostitutes. Yeah, so this whole chapter says, number one, here's an, institute, here's an incident where he was with a prostitute. And then it says, and then sometime, it transitions by saying, and sometime mm -hmm. later he fell in love with a Philistine woman yeah. named uh, Delilah. So really the only two things that are said about Samson during this whole time frame is that he was with this prostitute, and then he fell in love with a Philistine woman. That's right. And so it's all about the women, according to these couple yeah, He's verses. not fighting the battles. He's not doing what he should do. Yeah. This is the same problem King David has later, mm -hmm. when uh, when he has an affair with, with Bathsheba. He's so famous for the battles, and then the Bible says, a very telling phrase, it says, and it was the time of the year when kings go out to war. Right. And Where she David... Was, was he wasn't there. Right. David stayed home. That was the first time. Mm -hmm. And so he wasn't doing what he's supposed to do. He wasn't where he was supposed to be. And then that's when he wound up giving in to his own temptations. It's the same thing with Samson. If Samson had been out doing what he was supposed to do, he would have been delivering the people uh, from the Philistines. He would have been fighting. He would have been leading men. He would have been spiritually leading. And instead, he's chasing skirts. And, yeah. uh, you know, this is, this is his fatal flaw. So, so they once again, it's the exact same situation with his first marriage, mm -hmm. where the the Philistines, you know, coerce this woman who's in, who he's in love with. We don't know if he was in love with this first wife, but but clearly it says that he's in love with her, and they coerce her in saying, you know, uh, get get him to tell us something. In this case, a secret. Mm -hmm. So um, you would think that in the first three demonstrations. That Samson's like, there's no way I'm getting burned twice. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to talk about the. I, I learned that lesson with the carcass and the lion. Right, 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 right. So three times, it, it's like he's toying with her. Yeah. And you would think that he just does not give in, but then for some reason, on, on the fourth time, he tells her. Yeah. And I'm thinking, what is that? Well, I think when we're when we're living sinful lives, we're not in our right minds. Mm. When when we're not fulfilling our purpose, when we're not walking on God's path, when we're not 
honoring his words, then we're just not in our right minds. And so at this point, he's very weak. He's strong physically, but he's mentally weak because he doesn't have any spiritual strength. And you know what? That that was a great phrase because it recalls in my mind so many conversations I've had with people after like they got caught in an affair or something like sure, this. Sure. And what they say is they always like come to their senses. Yeah. And they always say like, I just don't know what I was thinking. Right. Like I didn't right. have the right perspective and I don't know what I was thinking. I was just sort of caught up in this mentality. It was, uh, and now that, you know, this coming to the senses moment, it says like, I don't understand why I was acting, behaving, believing and feeling that way. I think there's a hint. Yeah. I think there's a hint why he was behaving this way. In that first few verses when he's in Gaza and he tears up the the um, uh, the, the posts and the doors, these gates were big, like mm-hmm. camels could move through them. Probably mm-hmm. multiple camels could go side by side. They're tall, big. This are not just he grabbed a door off the hinges. He walks out with some city gates out of the city wall, throws them on his shoulder, takes them uphill. But this is the first time that any great feat was done by any judge, and it does not say that the Spirit of the Lord came on him. Mm. It's the first time that you see him, I got this, I'll do it myself. And he's no longer dialing into the power of God in his life. Mm. He's, he's walked away from that. He's totally self-indulgent, and he's not walking with God anymore. So he finally gives in to Delilah for whatever reason. Just Well, I, I, I have an opinion about that. There were five Philistine cities. So Ashdod, Ashkelon, Enron, Gath and Gaza, mm-hmm. and it says that the rulers of the cities came, So, and they offered her 1,100 shekels, which would be about $10,000 in silver each. each. So if that was just five rulers, they offered her 50 grand. Mm-hmm. If it was a couple rulers from each city, it would have been 100 grand, 150 grand, 200 grand. At a point, people have a price. Right. And and she she went wow this is life changing money for me no oh, clearly yeah and um and uh, so obviously it wasn't love the other way <laughs> yeah yeah he loved her she wasn't loving <laughs> she, him she wasn't loving yeah, him yeah. he he doesn't seem to have a lot of he, he thinks everybody loves him mm. <laughs> right. right he doesn't have a lot of social awareness yeah yeah so on the fourth time he for some reason gives in and uh, and you know she's nagging him of course and this is how he you know got in trouble the first time yeah and then they gouge his eyes out. Oh. I mean, I can't even imagine. So here's Samson. Again, you said this last podcast, but you said there's almost nothing worse than unreached potential. Yeah. So, you know, Samson's, you know, he's assumingly still in his prime. Yeah. And uh, and his life gets ended early because, you know, he has uh, decided to go his own ways. So for a lot of us, um, you know, we think we think to ourselves, man, God has given us so much. And sometimes we, you know, because of our selfish desire and lust and, you know, you know, selfishness and everything else. We we don't reach our potential. Right. We don't live our best life. Uh, sometimes we throw away marriages. Sometimes we throw away opportunities. Mm-hmm. A lot of times we throw away friendships. And quite honestly, we throw away unreached impact in this world to make yeah. a difference. Yeah. You know, God wants to use us. He has a great plan for us. And when we go our own way, we sometimes spend years walking away from what we could be doing. Mm-hmm. And so this is what Samson has done, and ultimately it's going to end to his demise. Right. So. So, you know, she's begging him, oh, tell me, please. And he's playing with her. He's clear. She knows he's playing with her. He's just horsing around. He's playing with her. She, but what he doesn't know is the bad guys are in the next room. They're just waiting. And uh, he's just playing with her. But then it talks about this incessant nagging to where he wants to die. It's driving him so crazy. Mm. And I think he thinks that they're so in love that this time it's going to be different. Mm. You know, that other hag that I was married to, that that heifer is what he called her, um, you know, she didn't really love me, and that's why she told my friends. But this time it's going to be different. It's it's different. We love each other. And I think that that's, you know, that's one of the definitions of insanity is we keep doing the same thing, hoping, you know, over and over, hoping that we get a different result. But I also think that we tell ourselves lies because we think we're in love, Mm. right? He's so desperate for love and companionship that he's so easily deceived. And so I think one of the lessons I learned from uh, Life Application Study Bible says to decide what kind of person that you'll love before passion takes over, right? Choose character and godliness before you choose physical attraction. And, and clearly, he's very driven by physical attraction, right? What he's seeing. And, and he's not discovering 
the character of the woman that he's attracted to. He's just attracted. And he can have whatever he wants because he's Samson. And most of the time, when we're married, married people will admit this, you spend more of your time with your spouse doing things that don't involve sex. <laughs> you know, then, so then your companion's faith, their personality, their temperament, their willingness to work through problems is far more important than just their kisses. But he's got his head in her lap, snuggled up, getting ready to go to sleep. It was a very physical relationship after having just come from a hooker, by the way, but very physical relationship. And then I think the other thing we can learn from him with regard to relationships is be patient. Because if he'd, if he'd spent time and he'd been observant at all without being super physical, it would have revealed beneath her beneath her present uh, her her pleasant appearance and her soft touch he would have realized she didn't have any character she was out to get him Ooh. and he didn't he just rushes in throws his heart at her finally just spills the guts hoping that things are going to be different than it was last time and he ruins he, he literally lo- loses everything yeah well it certainly appears that way yeah now how crazy is it it says that he had seven braids so dude's running around with like dreadlocks or something, right? Mm-hmm. That's what he's got. How crazy must he have looked yeah. like? It must have been oh, wild. And he was so a, tough. Hey, I, listen, I'm a dude and I think he's attractive and I haven't even seen him. <laughs> right? Yes, <'Cause>, okay. <laughs> well, I mean, think about yeah, it. Sure. I mean, this is a magnificent guy, it sure. sounds like. Yeah. I'm obviously kidding. But um, yeah. the um, uh, what I was going to say is this. Uh, so my thoughts were, as he's laying there and, you know, he finally ends up, you know, trusting her with this secret. Um you know, I, I just don't know if that was Samson's right to share that. It wasn't. You know, it, it was. It's like, um, you know, I don't. I don't really. It's. It's sort of the idea of like saying, "Who's first? Is it God, or is it your spouse?" You know. Right. Well, my. You know, my wife's first, or my husband's first, and then God and everything else, or my wife and kids, and then God. It's like even before our own family, we need to realize there are just some things that you don't mess with. You don't talk. You don't let anybody influence you to do do wrong. Right. So this reminds me of Job. Remember Job when he when he when he lost everything and all of his friends, mm-hmm. and then his wife was even saying, "Just mm-hmm. curse God and die." Right. And Job is like, "I'm I'm never going to curse God. I'm not going to let you, wife. Even if you know, it was his friends, wasn't it? No, it was his wife. Yeah, it was so, his wife. So his, his friends were challenging him in other ways, and his wife said, "Why don't you just curse God and die?" Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So that's what I was thinking of, and I was thinking like, it doesn't matter who it is. Yeah. Like nobody's going to talk me into bending my faith, and so here it is where Samson reveals the secret, and I don't care if you love her, I'm pretty sure that secret wasn't yours to share, because you know God had given that to you, and that was between you and God, and you have this mission on your entire life that was gifted to you by God. And so he sort of puts Delilah above yeah. his relationship with his heavenly father. Right. So she was very deceitful, yeah, right? So for sure. um, I, I wrote this down in my notes. Delilah was a deceitful woman with honey on her lips and poison in her heart. Mm-hmm. And she had no good intention for him whatsoever. He was a paycheck to her. Um, and the second time that he gets worn down by constant nagging and this is a pitiful excuse for disobedience. Man, we can blame spouses, we can blame siblings, we can blame parents, we can blame bosses, we can blame the the financial system, we can blame the current um, you know business market. Uh, we can we can blame all kinds of things as to why we have to do the wrong thing. And when you step back from them, you go, it's such a pitiful excuse. It costs you your eyes. It eventually costs you everything. You lose your power with God. You lose everything. That's such a dumb excuse. And I think in his sane moments when he's, you know, standing there grinding corn without being able to see anything, he had been thinking, why did I get fooled by this again? So don't allow anyone, no matter how attractive or persuasive or persistent they are, to pester you into doing the wrong thing because Mm -hmm. it'll cost you. Well, another thing that we uh, didn't talk about is that when he actually got his hair cut, Mm -hmm. And they said, Samson, wake up, wake up, the Philistines are upon you. It actually mentions in the Bible, it says, he didn't realize the Lord had left him. Right. Oh, what a sad phrase. What a sad phrase. Yeah. So so it, uh, how far off and how far away from God do you have to be when you don't even know that that uh, that God's presence has left you? Right. So you could be walking with God and feeling like, you know, and how does that translate today? So you could be right. walking with God today, 
you know, having a prayerful life, feeling like you're walking in the Spirit. The Bible says in the New Testament, we're in the Spirit or we're in the flesh. And if you walk and pursue the things of the flesh so much and you get to the point to where those those things you don't even notice, uh, that's a that's a pretty carnal place to be. Yeah. And you're so numb to, you know, it, it, it also reminds me of uh, Hophni and Phinehas, Eli's sons. Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 So in, in, in the Old Testament where... Where, where you know Eli's was the high priest and his sons were um, sleeping with the women in the in the temple and they were priests right and it's like and it's like it's that whole like blasphemy uh, mixing religion with with uh, with sin and that not even realizing you know that, that there's anything wrong with that and and it feels like that's where Samson is it's yeah. like it's like he's in this world of oh I'm a I'm a judge over Israel and I have a mission in my life and I'm gonna do what I want and God's completely left me, and it's all the same to me. Yeah. Make no mistake, he didn't lose his power because his hair got cut. Right. Right? His hair, or his power, didn't come from his hair, but from what it represented. It represented his dedication to God and God's plan. Mm. But this was the last thing that even come close to representing that kind of commitment to God. So he had already not had the power of God in his life. He tore those those uh, gates out of the the city in Gaza without God's power. And then here he is. He just didn't know it yet. He'd gotten so accustomed to being so worldly that he had no concept, that he had no more power. And then, of course, this happens, and that's it. The good news is, doesn't matter how far you've gone, your hair can start growing back, Mm -hmm. right? You can rededicate yourself to Christ. Now, there might still be scars. His eyes didn't grow back, Mm -hmm. right? But the hair started growing back. That was the thing he could do to demonstrate that he was rededicating his life to God. He let his hair grow. His hair grows back. He's committed again to God's plan. He's committed again to to his walk with God. And uh, we'll see what happens. Yeah, next week. Yeah. So, uh, okay, well, we'll just finish up the story of Samson tomorrow. So we hopefully will see you then. Thank you for joining us today. If you enjoyed this podcast, please help us spread the word by liking this episode and sharing it on your social media platforms. Be sure to leave a comment and review, and don't forget to give us five stars. When you do, you help us reach even more people who need a daily devotional like HC Daily. If you'd like to hear more from Chris and Jeff, they're both teaching pastors at Heritage Church located in Southeast Michigan. You can get more of their messages by clicking on the Messages tab at HeritageChurch.com. Be sure to join us again soon for another episode of HC Daily.